The Sabres double up the Flames, 3-1 and one on the season. Another win to recap and a weekend affair with the Canucks to look forward to. That is coming up here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. Be sure to like and subscribe us on our YouTube channel. You can listen to us and watch us on YouTube where you can leave a comment, you can leave a question, you can leave a question on Twitter as well. Uh, and we've got a couple of Twitter things to get to today, at least one, um, before we recap Sabres and Flames. A 6-3 to three win by the Sabres in Calgary. They are 2-0 and on this West Coast trip. They are 3-1 and on the season. So we've got a lot of tidbits, my notebook from this game, a couple of stats from this game, and I got the goat head of the night uh, to give out uh, for the fifth time this year, fourth time this year. Uh, and again, we'll uh, preview Sabres and Canucks a little bit later on. We are going to skip the Hack Eichel uh, report, the Slack Eichel report, as some wanted to call it. He had a pretty good night. He had a pretty good night. We don't need to go into detail. Just, you know, Vegas had a good night. Eichel had a good night. Have your fun. We'll be back in a couple of days, I'm sure, uh, talking more about Vegas. Although they're off to, what is it, a 4-1 and one start, I think, to the season. Uh, but anyways, enough about him. More about the Sabres. And we'll start with our Twitter question of today. Really not much of a question. It's more of a comment. More of a comment on something that I specifically uh Drudged up. Um, and it is thinking about the reverse retro uniforms because we had those revealed yesterday. We talked a little bit about the blue and gold goat head um, that the Sabres are going to be selling in the next couple of days and they'll be wearing uh, starting in the next couple of weeks. But I, uh, you know, I was thinking to myself, all right, well, this is cool. But if they're going to have another reverse retro uniform, because they did this two years ago, they did that this year. And Adidas, I was trying to find this. They're either at the end of this deal uh, done with the NHL at the end of this year, or they have one more year after. And I don't know which one it is. But anyways, if the NHL has this reverse retro concept once again next season, what will the Sabres do? Because they've already had the goat head. They've already used the red uniform, but they did it in white. So what's next? Will they do something with the slug? Will they do something with their classic? Will they do something with the 40th anniversary script uh, jersey? Uh, so I, I threw up a couple of uh, mocks uh, for for what the Sabres might want to do. So go to my Twitter, uh, go to our Twitter at Locked On Sabres, and let me know what you think of these concepts. Let me know if you want to throw something else out there. Just you know, firing some stuff up. Uh, I'm showing them on my YouTube channel right now. We've got. The 40th anniversary uniform. Remember the the pout the the lighter blue, almost Buffalo Bisons throwback esque uh, logo and jersey uh, that they wore in 2011. That uniform in white. Also that uniform in gold. I've been wanting to see the Sabers do a gold uniform, and they finally did it. And it was so bad, you know, the the turd burger that they might never go back to it, right? They might go 30 years without another gold jersey because it went so horrifically terrible uh, in the first incarnation of it. Uh, but this one I like. Go to my YouTube channel, check it out. Go to my Twitter, at Lockdown Sabres, and check it out. Uh, let me know which one you like. Let me know if you would want one edited. I, I'm just going to be playing around with Photoshop this weekend a little bit. Um, the red and black slug that I'm showing now, because I thought, you know, use the slug in some way. That's one jersey they haven't gone back to yet, and I don't need to see them do that. I'm like, what about in black and red? Because you got to have some spin on it so it's not just the plain old original. And I did it in black and red. It didn't come out as nice as I liked. The logo being red, it looks really dark as a jersey. Maybe if the uniform was red itself and the buffalo itself was black, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to play around with it a little bit. And then the other one was just the current logo they wear, current jersey they wear, but in black and red. Same thing. Um, I might play around with it a little bit more. It's a white uniform, black shoulders, red red and black stripes. Um, but, you know, maybe that jersey in red. I think that jersey in red. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play around with these a little bit more. But if you got any suggestions, let me know uh, for things I should Photoshop that you want to see done um, by the Sabres 
on their next reverse retro uniform. Um, the Pepsi logo. Uh, Lord Pickles, one of our followers on Twitter, uh, at Promo the Robot, he tweeted at us that they should do something um, along the lines of the Pepsi cap. But I think they'd have to get Pepsi's approval on it to do it because there probably was something to do with Pepsi when the Buffalo Bisons wore that in uh, the 50s and 60s. Also, the the B, the B with the sword through it, it was their alternate logo for a long time. It was on the shoulder of their black and red uniforms. I think it was on the shoulder of their slugs too at some point. Um, that was suggested to me. But um, yeah, I'm going to play around with it a little bit more because I like uniform stuff and reverse retro season is always a fun season for me. And I'm already thinking about what they might do next year because if there is this again, then I don't really know where they turn. I don't even have a good guess as to where they would turn. But anyways, Sabres and Flames. Let's get into it just a little bit here. We'll take a timeout, and we'll uh, we'll give away the goat head of the night. My notebook, um, you know, in this game, the Sabres just, I thought, played a lot better than they did in Edmonton. The score sheet looks very uh, similar between the two nights. They win by three against Calgary. They win by two against Edmonton. Four goals, six goals, two goals, three goals. Um, the Edmonton game, the Oilers had a ton of chances from the slot from the high danger scoring areas. And I thought the Sabres really were outplayed in that game, despite getting the result and getting the win in this game against Calgary. The Sabres were, in my opinion, the better team. Uh, And I think that is represented in some of the stats that you'll look at, uh, which we'll break down in a matter of moments here. But one thing that I wanted to show everybody, uh, at least on our YouTube channel is the heat map from the night. Uh, This is from natural statric. And if you look at the heat map, where the shot attempts came from, look at the Sabres, dark blue blobs right in front of the the Flames net. And that points to a lot of shots from, of course, the slot around the net, prime scoring areas. Look at Calgary's. Calgary's much more dispersed around the, the offensive zone. Not a lot going on in front of the net here. Almost nothing going on in the slot. You know, a little bit of these red marks uh, that show some extra volume uh, around the face-off circles. But for the most part, the Sabres kept Calgary to the outside and they had their chances in the middle of the ice. Uh, and that is represented in the high danger scoring chance area, despite the fact that Calgary outshot the Sabres in this game by four, by nine, 43 to 32 in favor of Calgary in this game. The Sabres had eight high danger scoring chances to Calgary's seven. The Sabres had uh, almost the same amount of just general scoring chances. That was 33 to 31 uh, shot attempts in this game were 55 for Calgary, 53 for Buffalo. So they were right there. They were right there with a really good team. Calgary, I think is a really good team. They were on the road. They chased a starting goaltender. Remember this was the first night of the year. The Sabres had faced a starting goaltender. They faced backups in their first three games and they chased them. We didn't even get to see a starting goalie for that long because the Sabres did so much good work on him in the first period that they got him out of there and uh, the Calgary Flames had to go to their backup. Um, I thought it was just a great overall game by several Sabres. I thought Dylan Cousins had another great game. J.J. Paterka had another great game. I think Owen Power, this was his best night of the season. Um, He was physical in this game. He had two assists. He was making nice passes. He was involved in the offensive zone. He's shown a little bit more aggression to jump up into plays. He's not going to get named my goat head of the night, but his first multi-point performance by Owen Power, he was very impressive to me. I noticed him several times throughout the night. And remember, he's not a guy that you'll always notice. If he's doing his job, sometimes you won't notice him, but he was making some special plays in this game against Calgary. Um, couple of records that Sabres broke here. Rasmus Dahlin, the first NHL defenseman to open a season with four goals in each of his first four games, a goal in each of his first four games. So four goals total. Uh, and we'll see how long he goes. I was wondering, I told you, by the way, well, maybe you listened to me on our betting preview of the show yesterday on Sabres and Flames. I had two bets, anytime goal score, one on Dylan Cousins at plus 400. He did score. And one on D- and the one on Rasmus Dahlin at plus 500. He did score. Part of my reasoning was the Sabres would make a concentrated effort to get him that record if there was an empty net at the end of the game. He did not need it because there he is in the first period. Great job, great risk take to jump up into the play, go to the slot, and J.J. Paterka, great vision, 
head up, knows where Darlene is coming, puts it right on the tape, and Darlene's able to rip a wrist shot right away past Jacob Markstrom for, again, an NHL record fourth goal in his first four games for a defenseman, one being in each. Um, so Darlene, a really nice shot. Uh, the shot looks good from him. It looks hard. It looks quick. He's getting a lot of torque on his stick. There's a little bit more of his lower body involved than when he first came into the league, and it was all in his wrists. So Darlene is turning into a star before our eyes. He's maybe already a star uh, before our eyes, and uh, the goals are now starting to come with it. Six points in four games, including four goals, uh, and then the two assists. Uh, also in this game, Eric Comrie played really well, becomes the first Sabre to have 40 save wins in consecutive games. 40 save wins in consecutive games. He stopped 40 of 43. So good for Eric Comrie. I'm stunned Dominic Hasek never did that. Is anybody else stunned? Hasek in all those years, six Vesnas with Sabres, he never had two games in a row where they won and he had 40-plus saves? Okay, apparently not. Comrie did it, though. Uh, so good for him. Uh, we'll take a timeout here. A couple other things for my notebook, and we'll go through the stats of the game between the Sabres and the Flames. Quick look at the standings, and then a quick preview of Sabres and Canucks. That is all ahead here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast with Joe DiBiase. We are brought to you by BetOnline.net, uh, your number one source for betting football, hockey, start of the basketball season, NBA just fired up. I find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. Uh, I told you I use it for my fantasy football lineup decisions. I'm starting to use it for my fantasy hockey lineup decisions. What's the anytime goal score uh, odds and whatnot? Because if I'm trying to get a goal out of a guy, you know, oh, Alex Tuck minus or plus 200. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Jake Gensel plus 150. Okay, I guess I'll go with Jake Gensel. Use Bet Online for your tiebreakers and your fantasy matchups. Keep up to date on all the odds and uh, the latest analysis on every sport. That includes ba- baseball, too. Baseball playoffs, MMA. You've got Jake Paul and Anderson Silva a week from Saturday. Uh, boxing, golf. Uh, they got it all. Head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Joe DiBiase back here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. The Sabres with a 6-3 to win over the Calgary Flames. They continue to uh, play well. 3-1 to on the season. 3-1 and one on the season so far. And it was good to see Dylan Cousins get rewarded. He's not going to be my goat head of the night. But good to see Cousins get rewarded. He's built up a lot of chances through the first couple of games. He's been great carrying the puck. He's been great setting other guys up, just being involved in the offensive zone. Uh, Cousins has been really dynamite, I think, through the first couple of games, and he was rewarded. He almost wasn't, right? He has that. He he takes the pass from, I think, Hino Stroza. He goes forehand, backhand, and I thought he slid it under Jacob Markstrom's pads, but Markstrom had stopped it just enough. But then Markstrom tries to do the thing with his pads where he pulls it up to himself. And he once he pulls his pads up, he reveals the puck just laying there on the goal line. But go down Cousins to have his head up to know that the play is not over because the defenseman looked like he did. Michael Stone, I think, was the defenseman. He looked like he thought the play was over. Cousins did not. Kept his stick on the ice, head was up, ready to swipe it in the moment that it came available, and he did. Uh, he put it in the net, outfought Stone, and you know he only had to shovel the puck, you know, half an inch to be able to get it in. But he started the play in the first place uh, by having that scoring chance and going hard to the net and almost finishing it on the uh, the mini breakaway there. So good on Cousins, first goal of the season. Uh, the goat head of the night is going to go. To Alex Tuck, I have to give it to Alex Tuck, right? He had a hat trick, and they were good goals. The empty netter at the end, of course, is an empty netter. But the first two, you know, we're talking about a really good wrist shot on the first one. And then the second one, man, that toe drag he makes around the flame defenseman Anderson. So clean. That's a dangerous play, too. When you're a player like Tuck, and you're you're kind of cutting to the middle like that, and you are toe dragging to the middle like that, you are in prime position to get drilled. You got to have a little bit of courage to go to that spot and do it the way he did it. But he did, and he finished, right? He makes the move. The The, the flame blows by him, doesn't even make contact with Tuck. It's just the cleanest toe drag you'll see in an NHL game. And it's all in one motion. Toe drag to shot, low blocker, you know, 
The first goal was posted in, right? That was a sweet shot. The second one is low blocker, and it's a good hard finish. Tuck's got a nice shot. He's got nice hands, and he's got the size to be uh, unafraid to go to the middle like that. Tuck is definitely the goat head of the night with his first career hat trick. First career hat trick, not just for the Sabres, but in the NHL. Uh, so good on Alex Tuck, um, who is up to four goals now on the season. Um, some stats. From today's game. Tuck actually, I almost thought about not giving him goat head of the night because other than the goals, he didn't really have a strong game. And the numbers back that up. Tuck's Corsi percentage, shot attempt percentage on the night, 33.3%. That was dead last on the Sabres behind Peyton Krabs, Gergensen's, Thompson, Skinner, Oposo. Those guys were all just above uh Tuck, but Tuck was dead last. And also looking at expected goals for uh, on the night. Uh, Tuck was at 29%, which was dead last on the Sabres on the night. There were a couple of turnovers he had. I still gave him go ahead of the night because the two goals he he had were phenomenal. Um, but he was last in that category. I just thought that was a little bit interesting. Uh, top of the table and expected goals for for the Sabres on the night. Vinny Hinostroza, 73.6%. Phenomenal game. From Hinostroza, Rasmus Asplund, who always rates well in this category at 70%, and then Dylan Cousins, Casey Middlestat at 69%. And there is JJ Paterka at 66% expected goals for shot attempts uh, for some of those guys. Asplund, 19 to 10 in favor of Asplund. Hinostroza, 19 to 13 in favor of Vinny. Uh, Middlestat, 16 to 10 in favor of him. It was just a really good night by a couple of different Sabre lines. In fact, it was very stark how much better two lines played than the other two. Uh, the best line by far was Middlestat, Olison, and Asplund, if you look at the numbers, shot attempt-wise. And it did feel like they always had the puck when they were out there. I really think that's the Asplund effect. I think you put Asplund out there with any line, and he's going to save the day. He's going to make them uh, a solid line. He's going to do the dirty work. He's going to carry the puck. He's going to tur- turn the puck over from the other team. Um, right behind them, though, uh, the cousins Hinostroza paterka line had a really solid, solid outing once again. And then Gergensen's Krebs, Okposo, not so much. And Thompson, Skinner, Tuck, in general, did not, but they did get the goals, which made their night uh, a little bit better. Eric Comrie in this game. Another solid performance by Comrie. A couple of really nice saves. Showed good poise, side-to-side movement. 40 saves on 43 shots. He is second place in the NHL in goals saved above expected. Uh, Craig Anderson, by the way, it's not like he was bad in his only game because he rates in the top 20 in that category as well. But Eric Comrie is off to a phenomenal start. Uh, And I would keep playing him. I would keep playing Eric Comrie until he slows down. And that means I would play him against the Cal- or against the uh, Vancouver Canucks. Now, injury in this game. Henry Okiharu leaves in the first period. He was hit in the face with a puck. He did not return. So the Sabres went down to five defensemen. And Casey Fitzgerald, who made his season debut, didn't play all that much. Only 15 minutes and four seconds. So this was a four-man show on the Sabres' blue line. For, by the way, the second game in a row, because Ilya Labushkin left with an injury on Tuesday against Edmonton. So. Matias Samuelson leads the way with 25 minutes and 18 seconds, including a team high 23 minutes and eight seconds at even strength. Darlene, 25 minutes, 15 seconds. Jacob Bryson season high, 22 minutes, 25 seconds. And then Owen Power at 21 minutes and 11 seconds. He gets his first multi-point game of his career with two assists on the night. Uh, Hinostroza, by the way, three assists, a three-point night. For Hinostroza. He again, he and that line were incredible. Uh, Casey Middlestat gets a nice breakaway goal, forehand, backhand, and he gets rid of it early. So he's able to go bar down. Thompson gets an assist. Paterka gets an assist to remain at a point a game. Asplund gets an assist. I mentioned the Cousins goal. And then Jacob Bryson gets two assists as well. So just a solid overall night by the Sabres. They didn't dominate the Flames. They outplayed them, in my opinion, just by a little bit. And they get the result six to three to improve to three and one on the season that ties them with the Boston Bruins early on here for first place in the Atlantic division. It's only four games. We've got, you know, we've got 20 more to go. We've got 20 more of what we just did. Um, But the Sabres have six points. Excuse me. Boston is at eight points, not six. So Sabres in second place goal differential at seven. That's where they're tied with Boston goal differential uh, at plus seven. We'll take a timeout here when we come back. 
preview of Sabres and Canucks. Look at some of the betting lines and also what the lineups might look like and what Vancouver's up to. That's coming up here on the Locked on Sabres podcast with Joe DiBiase. Welcome back to the Locked on Sabres podcast with Joe DiBiase. We've got another Sabres game to talk about Saturday night against the Vancouver Canucks. And the Sabres, we'll see what they do in net for this game. Eric Comrie would be what I would do. Go back to him. He's hot. Keep it rolling. Um, but they might go back to Craig Anderson just to get him a game and then go back to Comrie in Seattle. I would imagine, though, you split these two games between the two. Um, but I would keep going Comrie until he uh, until he runs out of gas or he has a bad game. Play the hot hand, if you will, uh, for the Sabres goalies for right now. Um, we'll see what the lineup looks like. We do know one thing. And that is that Lawrence Pilot has been recalled from the Rochester Americans. He has not played for the Sabres in three years because of his stint in the KHL. And now he's being back, being sent to Rochester. Henry Okiharu with his injury. Ilya Labushkin with his injury. We'll see if either one of those two are able to play. If they cannot, Pilot would be the one to go. And that's another left shot defenseman. By the way, the Sabres, I think, would be down to one right shot defenseman in their lineup uh, against the Canucks if Pilot has to play. Pilot is a left shot D, so is Bryson, so is Power, so is Samuelson. Now, Darlene is playing on the right side, but he's a left shot too. Bryson's played a little bit of both. So my estimation would be Darlene, uh, Darlene, who's the second one I can't think of? Oh, it's Ben Yoki Haru. Darlene, do they not have a right shot defenseman? Hold on a second. Did I just discover something or am I forgetting my monitor almost just fell off? I, I was so stunned by this. Am I forgetting a Sabres defenseman? And is everybody right now being like, Joe, you idiot. There's just one guy that you're forgetting. Um, right shot defenseman, Labushkin, Yoki Haru, Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald. Sorry. Uh, Casey Fitzgerald's a right shot defenseman. So you're the right side of your blue line would be Darlene. Fitzgerald, and probably Bryson, I would imagine, uh, for this game against the Canucks if Yoki Haru and Labushkin cannot play. Betting lines for this game. Uh, the Sabres are an underdog. Excuse me. Plus 157 on the money line. The puck line is not up yet at Bet Online. Uh, puck line is not up yet, but the money line plus 157, only a slight underdog, not as bad as they were against Calgary or Edmonton. And the over-under in this game is plus 101 uh, at six, six and a half. Six and a half goals, and the over is at plus 101. The under is at minus 111. Uh, there's no prop bet information up yet. I would imagine that Darlene is going to be back around plus 500. I just want to keep it rolling. Keep it rolling with Darlene anytime goal score, but it will depend on the odds. Uh, if it's around plus 400 or 500 like it was last game, I think I'm going to be back on that train. Uh, and the Canucks so far this season. So the Canucks are not off to a good start. Um, not at all. In fact, they have not played at home, uh, but they are 0-3-2 in their first five games. Again, all on the road. They lost to Edmonton, Philadelphia, Washington, Columbus, and Minnesota. Not only did they go on the road early, but they came out to the east early. They went to Philly, they went to Washington, they went to Columbus, and then they went to Minnesota. Their home opener will be tomorrow night against the Sabres. And I would imagine with uh, a rough start and your first game at home, they're going to be fired up to play. So this could be, this could be an energy game that the Sabres have to match Vancouver, that they're going to have the advantage coming in because they are the home team. Sabres are, you know, a week into a West coast trip here, uh, flying around from Calgary and Edmonton and Vancouver. Um, so we'll see what we get, but I think the energy levels are going to be important to match by the Sabres, a young team. So I would imagine that they're going to be able to do it, but Vancouver is going to be fired up. That's a tough spot too, by the way, right? If you're a fan of the Canucks, it's like, all right, I can't wait for the home opener. Oh, and we're already 0 and five to start the season. That kind of sours it a little bit. Um, but yeah, Vancouver's home opener tomorrow night, Sabres and Canucks at 10 o'clock puck drop. We will talk about all of it on Monday um, and enjoy Saturday's game. Uh, follow us on Twitter. I'm at Sneaky Joe Sports. Twitter account is at Lockdown Sabres and check out our YouTube channel as well. Be sure to leave us a, a like and get us give us a, a subscribe uh, on uh, on YouTube as well. But that's going to do it for us here in the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen, Locked On Fantasy Hockey. Your first listen, uh, or Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone bring you the fantasy edge and help you 
Stay ahead of the competition with daily updates of news analysis and advice Monday through Friday. It's available on YouTube, Odyssey, and wherever you get your podcasts. We will talk to you next week here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Later.